Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. For my location now is good afternoon. Uh, I've seen people coming from India, uh, Dubai, and uh, other countries. Maybe India now is evening. So first of all, welcome everyone to this uh, web web webinar section. Uh, today is a very short day for me. Uh, I have about a few minutes to explain to everyone how to deep dive in W network, pivoting with MetaExploit and blockchain. Uh, I had a great introduction, introduction with uh, a miss that was introducing me. My name is Vanildo Pedro. Uh, today, I will be introducing on how to network pivoting on multiple network using MetaExploit. I haven't seen people using different methods and approach to pivoting uh, to multiple, multiple networking. The idea today is not to get started from scratch on how to hack your first machine. No, it's actually, I will be using like uh, what we call on, on uh, pen testing. Uh, we say that it's post-exploitation, already get access to our first machine. And then how can you uh, move lateral during your network? So before I go that, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vanildo Pedro and I'm CEO of Empire Cybersecurity. Uh, as uh, how you guys seen on the previous slide, all my certifications is resuming on, your, on what you guys can see here. And also I have, I've created three courses, but the, both the, the three of them, they're on Portuguese language. So maybe most of them here, most of you guys here speak English. So it will not be good for you to attend those courses, but it's simple to, to know that I have developing courses. I will go straight because I have a few time and I will introduce our topology before I starting uh, explaining what's going on today. This is our target topology. Before we go deeper, we, know, we need to understand what exactly is pivoting. Uh, when you get access to your first machine, the first thing you get is you have your, your, your network here, that's your public access. And then here you will have your local network. Pivoting is the techniques that she's using to connect to other networks inside uh, a corporate or inside a company. Uh, most of the time, this approach is using by attackers to gain access to other machines by uh, sending traffic to the first already compromised machine. So for that, I will be showing how we can do that and how we can use another tool called the prox chain so that we can send proxies, so that we can send uh, information there, so that people can actually use those tools to gain access. And then also, I will be, I will be talking about port forwarding. That's another technique that can be used to uh, send traffic to a specific port, and then we can get access to uh, a server or a service that's running on that specific service. So I'm not a PowerPoint guy, so please don't expect me to be here showing you guys PowerPoints, 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 no. I've already set up the, my lab environment. My lab environment is exactly what we are seeing here. Let's go to the, the, this lab environment first. Here, uh, second, okay. Here, we have our first target. We'll assume that we have already compromised this machine. During your pen testing, uh, first thing you get is access to the first internal machine. This machine, we, I have already compromised it, okay? So it's mean that I have credential to access this machine. If you get credential to access this machine, this machine is already connected to another network. Which network is connected? It's connected to this network. What's the first goal? The first goal before we go 
inside or start hacking other machines is to get access to any machine that is connected to this network. So what we're gonna do first, we already compromised this machine. The second time we'll go and compromise this machine and then we'll pivot and compromise this machine. This machine is the web server that's running, uh, that is running uh, uh, IIS server. Okay, so I will show how can you also connect to this machine using Prox chain. So first, when we talk about pivoting, pivoting is a simple, is a simple context. Pivoting on, on the attack, it's exactly what I have shown you guys, that if you compromise this machine, you can move lateral and use this machine connection or section to compromise another machine inside the network. Also, we can use already compromised machine and compromise another network. Our goal is not to take down our domain control. This can stay for another section, okay? So uh, I will log into my Kali machine right now, and then I will start performing the attack. As I said, I'm not here to show how to, uh, how to get access to your first machine that's connected or exposed to internet, but how you can use that actual machine that you already compromised it to get access to the machines. So let me log into my machine. I hope you guys can see my Kali screen. If anyone is not able. Uh, can it, are you guys able to see my screen? Uh, the screen is able, uh, is visible. Uh, I think somebody here has an issue. Okay. Anyhow, the screen is visible uh, for most. So um, I think the person who is not able to see can rejoin the meeting to check again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Before you proceed, let's confirm our topology and to see if I got the right IP address. So uh, if you recall, our attacker machine, that's our Kali Linux, is directly connected to our uh, Windows 10 machine. That's how they say, I already compromised that machine and I got the credential. Those are the credentials that I can use to easily access the already compromised machine. Okay, so with that, let me quickly connect to that machine using a already available model on MetaExploit that is called BS exec. Let me just type in here. Okay. So I will use this Metasploit module to connect my already compromised machine. Okay, I will do this quickly because as I said, I will assume that you already have access to your target. Okay.
Okay. Uh, as I said, I will not be I will not be here to. Okay, I will not be explaining uh, how to use, uh, how to get access to your machine, to your target machine using credential, because as I said, I will assume that already got a metapetic section uh, on your target. So I forgot to initialize this metapetic section. That's why I had to quickly uh, connect to my target machine. So uh, now is where the action begins. Let me just quickly go back to, to our PowerPoint. I have connected to this machine, okay? I have connected to this machine. This machine is connected to two networks. The first network is network that is connected to the internet where my target or my attacker has, has direct access. The second, the second network is internal network. Our goal is after we compromise the first machine, we can uh, pivot or access other networks inside that this machine can directly connect. So which networks could directly connect? According to the topology, we can see this 172.16.17 uh, uh, network, but during your pen testing or during your attack, you will not be able to find any topology easily for, of your target network. I just draw this, net, this topology to be easy to understand the network flow that, that the, the network flow that we use to understand how to pivot between networks. So now that we have connected to our target machine, we can uh, identify which network and IP address is uh, associated, is assigned to this NIC, and we can create a routing or create a, a, a route so that our attacker machine can be able to access another network that's connected to this uh, Windows 10 machine. So with that, We'll use a tool inside the meta exploit or a module inside the meta exploit to do that, that call auto route. What exactly what we are doing? When you get access to a machine, and for example, we can use here if config, okay? Oh, let me just see. It failed to get what? Okay. Okay. I have many sections here. Uh, all of them. Just below those sections. Okay. Okay. I just killed all my sections. I had multiple sections and I prefer to have only one section that is working perfectly. I don't know if I'm having any connection issue, but those networks are directly connected. This are not supposed to take all of this time and doing all of this. Okay. If config, if you can see, I have two networks. According to our, our topology, this network is the network that our target is directly connected. This one is connected to our attacker network. This is another network that our target is not able to communicate. 
So with that, what can we do? We can easily create a path so that our target, our, uh, our target machine can be able to communicate with this network. So pivoting is to create uh, a path or create uh, a path that we can communicate to other, other subnets or get access to other uh, subnets inside the network. So 172.16.17 is the network that this attacker cannot be able to communicate. So we have two options there. We can use uh, directly to this section, Metropolitan section, a, a module called Auto Route, and we can configure a route so that MetaExploit can be able to create a route to this particular network. But we'll use another tool that we can be we can give us access from our target uh, our attacker machine to that network so it's easy for us to use the both methods okay i will start using the traditional method that is the old method that we used it before i will use background background i want to background my section right now uh, i will search for uh, not search, I will add here. Let me just confirm my section. This is why I don't like to have many sections. Let me just kill one section. Okay, let me kill this five and confirm if it's working perfectly. Okay, it's there. Okay. I will just write here route add. The network that we want to add here is the network that we found on our target, that is 172.16.17. Uh, 17. So we'll add here route add 172.16.17.0 0 slash 24. The 24 is the subnet mass that we need to specify and also we have to specify the section that we want to add this route what exactly we are doing is to add a route so that metaexploit can know how to reach that specific subnet and which section is providing the connection to that uh, particular subnet if i click here head let me just check here Section is everything okay with this section? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Got that error, but we got here. That error, uh, if you use the auto route, it will give you the same error. Because of what? Because we are using a different meta pattern section. So it's not that the case. So we can see now that we have here a route that can be directly connected to our subnet and the same one is specifying the section. But let's explain something. We created a route to a specific subnet, but we, did, we didn't create any kind of communication from our attacker machine to this network. Imagine now if I want to scan this network and find for live hosts or to find for any kind of, um, uh, to, to scan for my target or to find a live host. I will not be able to do that because my local machine is not able to communicate to this network. Only MetaExploit can communicate to this network. So what we can do, we can create a proxy. So we will use a tool called uh, proxy chain so that we can be able to create that uh, communication. So proxy chain is a tool that forced any TCP connection made by a given application to go through SOC, SOC 5, uh, SOC uh, 4, etc. 
So the best thing to understand what exactly proxchain does is to illustrate it, demonstrating how that can be done. But before you use proxchain, you have to enable meta, meta exploit to be able to listen to any kind of connection that's coming through socket. To meta exploit to be able to do that, we can use something that is called, uh, we use a module on meta exploit. Let's use the auxiliary server stocks proxy. So this module can enable us the can enable us to be able to send the traffic through proxies and communicate to meta exploit. If we check the options here, by default, here you have port 108. So what you have to do is to configure locally our proxy chain to be able to communicate to meta exploit. I will quickly run, we can find here on this specific directory, proxy chain, okay? So what you have to do is to check if the port that is listed here is the same port that is here. By default, if you have installed a fresh Kali Linux, you will not, it will not match the ports. The port will be different. So the server port here will be something like uh, 950 or something like that, I'm not sure. What you have to do end here, maybe we'll find a SOC5. Uh, SOC4. So if you are using SOC4 here and here on Meta Exploit SOC version is 5, it will not communicate. So you have here to put SOC5 and the port that is here must be the same port here. Okay. So if we save this, okay, and we need to run here as a job, it's not running the SOC. Just run it. There's some check. Okay, it stopped. Let me just see something. You can see here, it said started and stopping for one reason. I have started the sock, but I didn't close it properly. I'm sure about that. Let me just check this. I must have here uh, something running. As I can see, I have here ProxSock listing. Yeah, you guys can come across with this, but uh, <laughs> let me just kill this process. Okay. Uh, what's process ID? This one. I don't like to troubleshooting anything during the presentation. Okay, so now I can easily start this. Okay, you guys can see that the proxy server has already started. Uh, it's good because if you get to the same uh, problem, your proc start and immediately stop is because it's already running. So you have to kill that process and start it again. So if I come here to prop to jobs, you will see that there is a job here that is running. Okay. We've done the half part of this uh, attack, but we still need to find our target. Let's map our network. Okay, I will create here on share a tree. Okay, uh, network IPs. Okay, first. I'm going back to my section, okay? It's config. This network is the network that my target machine has uh, the right access. This network, my Kali cannot reach without any type of pivoting or, or any type of pivoting, okay? So it's meaning that this is our next target. So meaning that this is our next target. So what you have to do is to discover how many machines are connected to this network. How can you do that? We can simply run 
here on our actual section, for example, help command to list all uh, the help table on this particular host. We can see that our IP address listing uh, assigned on this interface is 128. But here, after we run the help command, we found that there is another machine that was assigned to IP address 129. But I don't like actually to use this method because if you are doing pen test or during your engagement, you will not be able sometimes to list all the IP address using these techniques. You can use a, a post exploitation model that will force the, the meta exploit to run an ARP scan. How can we do that? So let me simple background this section, but actually we have found a target here. Let's that. Uh, let me remove this and next target is 129. Okay. What I'm doing now is to use another technique to achieve the same goal. Okay. I want uh, I will background my section. Let's see, let's search for uh, ARP scanner. We have here uh, auxiliary scanner discovered, and we have here post Windows Garden Heart scanner. We can use, uh, since we are running uh, into a Windows machine, we can use the post Windows Garden information. We have here use tree. Guys, simple. I'm not, to, I don't want to go deeper on each module and uh, on meta exploit because this can take time. What I want to, to explain is how we can achieve our goal on multiplus network. This is a simple, a fresh, uh, uh, a fresh technique or a simple way to do the same thing that I like to show before we go to another section. So, Actually, we find our target, that's this one, network. Let's just set our host. We'll set here our network and the section. Let me just confirm the section. It's section four. So what MetaExploit will do is to run an app scan through this uh, network. So we'll confirm that we only have only one uh, target left on that specific network. This can take time some time, but it's very uh, important to run if you want to discover multiple targets on your subnetting network or on your pivoting network. So it will here show uh, the next, the, our other targets like one, one, 129, others and others IP address, if they are available, okay? This can take uh, a time, I will cancel, okay? Because we found here this IP address. Okay, there are two ways to, to know how we can uh, exploit or how we can enumerate our target or gather more information about our target. The first thing we have to do is to find the open ports. We can use MetaExploit to find the open ports, but we can use Nmap to achieve the same goal. I like to use Nmap because Nmap is faster, Nmap has more options than that relaying on only on the MetaExploit on the MetaExploit modules. So we did the, the best part during this uh, attack, configuring, Prox chain and enable SOC. So SOC is already running and Prox chain is coming by default on uh, Kali machine. What we have to do now is to run uh, a, a Nmap scan to scan for all open ports on our target machine. But there is something that we have to understand. If we want to combine MetaExploit uh, Nmap with prox chain, we have to understand the limitations of prox chain of using prox. Prox only will perform uh, TCP connections. So it means if we perform TCP connection, we have to uh, force Nmap to only 
send packets using TCP connections. How we can do that? Normally, we run Nmap to our target by specifying Nmap and the IP address. Sometimes we want to do a very quick uh, scan port scan. I will specify here the top ports that I want to scan. Okay, the top ports, I will say the top 50 ports. So Nmap will run the scan only for the top 50 ports. For if you are doing like uh, a local pen testing and you have direct access to the network, this process will not take time. But if you are doing it through VPN or through a public network or in, through internet, it will take time. So that's why it's better for you to specify the top ports that you want to scan rather than going there and just put the all ports. If you do something like this, like to scan all ports on your target, the, the chance for you to get timeout and you cancel your, your, and your scan are very high, okay? Now that I've specified my, my commands on, the, on my scan, I need also to tell Edmap to only use TCP connection. Okay, and then here I will specify to all these requests go through blockchain. So the blockchain is connected uh, to run or to send traffic to local host to this port, and there's the same port that MetaExploit is listing. All the traffic will be sent and will go through the uh, MetaExploit. So let's start this. Okay, something I've done. Okay. Mm. Okay, I haven't seen this before. Let me just change. Okay. What happened is uh, after I updated my Kali machine, I had this problem. Uh, it's saying that the route is not available. But why that happened? It's because it's not allowing to use. Uh, if I'm using route to my route user, it's not giving that. I found this yesterday because I upgraded to my my Kali machine yesterday, and I didn't have time to troubleshoot. So. I, uh, if someone know what exactly how to get work around on this, can post on the on our chat section. But I found out this yesterday in the evening after I upgrade my Kali, I tried to use Procchain and then giving that error. I changed my user to local user, and then was working fine. So I didn't have time to troubleshoot on that. So when you come across this error, it gives me that. So the problem is not saying that there is no route. Is because something's happened during this is not allowing me to use a, a root. By default, I like to use route, root as my default user. Okay, I know people will say that's not the best approach, but I know that. <laughs> but I prefer to, to use the root. Okay, if you guys can see, we are able to scan our target 129 using Nmap. So we can see here that the port, <laughs> Okay, I was just reading a short question. Okay, uh, as you can see, it's going through many and many and many ports, but will stop only through the top 50, 50, 50 ports. So, to, take, to not take time, I will specify the ports that I want to, to scan, okay? Let me just do it here, okay? Uh, specify port. That's, okay. Port. 
Ok, vou por paz. Ok. Only those two ports is ok. My goal here is to show that it's easy to use Prox chain and also meta, uh, Nmap to scan to our target. So I've, I've pointed to uh, remote desktop and SMB. So let's check if those two ports are open on our target or not. If the SMB is open, as you can see, is returning to us that SMB is running and on, is open on port 445 and the remote desktop. You can use proxy chain uh, with and map to scan and have a better output. Remember, not all the commands that you normally use when you are using only and map, they will work. So you have to understand what exactly that command it does and which protocol it's used to communicate, okay? So we, we discovered that meta, uh, our target is running on port 445. So what can we do? Since we already have a credential from admin, I've, I've done this in a simple way. The same credential can be used on multiple targets. If the common misconfiguration we can find on our, on our networks or on the, our target networks for, for a few reasons. Most of the time, the admin can create or install or operation system, enable administrator for administrative purpose, and use the same credential on multiple uh, on multiple machine because it's thinking that our machine is running on our domain environment, and uh, and uh, people will not be thinking about getting access to local admin. But if you get access to a local admin, it means we can be voting and get access to another machine. So the first uh, attack that I will be uh, using now is to use a bind reverse shell. Okay, a bind shell. Let me explain what exactly I will I will gonna do here. We already got access to this target, right? Right here. So I will easily show how we can use bind shell to get access to this network. Bind shell is very easy when you are, when you are inside the pivoting. It's very easy. Why it's very easy? Because actually what you do is to send a malicious payload. And after that malicious payload is executed, the target machine will open a port and waiting for any connection. Reverse is a different. It's meaning that our attacker machine will open a port and will be waiting for a connection. So by doing a bind, uh, a bind, uh, a bind reverse or a bind connection, the bind connection is very easy through the pivoting. But sometimes the target can be uh, or have any kind of firewall or uh, endpoint secure that will block the clients to open ports and start listening. Because what bind does is, is what I was explaining. It will open a port, like for example, port 44444, and waiting for any connection. So what you have to do now is to understand that it's very simple to use bind, but it's very hard to use reverse shell. Okay? So I will start from the easy one that is using bind to get a, a, a reverse connect or a, a connection rather than using a reverse, okay? Let's just check here. To use bind, I will use the same, uh, the same approach I used it on the, first, on the first target. So let's just say here, search, uh, PS exec, okay, use five. Okay, since the uh, a port 444 is open, I can starting by 
sending a malicious payload through SMB. If it was not open or like only have, uh, I got port like 3389, that's the RDP. It's meaning that I will be connected to my target using RDP. I will, I will leave this uh, attack for our next target. So what I'm gonna do now is to, to set, let me just check my options. If you can see, the only thing I have to do here is to change the target remote host, okay? And here I will charge, rather than take a reverse TCP, I will take a bind TCP. I've already explained reverse, it's meaning that uh, our client, it will get back to us. But if we use bind, bind meaning the client will open a port and will be waiting for a uh, connection, okay? So let's just change here, set payload. I will change my payload here. My interpreter, bind ECP, okay? So I changed my uh, payload and as you can see, the host is showing here remote host. It's not anymore showing us a uh, local host. So what's the IP address of our remote host? If we recall here, this is our target. So let's just specify here. Set remote host, uh, wait. Okay, we have here remote host. And is the only thing we have to do. Because what we are doing is we are reusing the same credential to get access to another target inside the network. Science, we, uh, we are assuming, because we can use another technique to test if that uh, credentials are valid in that uh, machine or not. This is not the scope of our presentation. So uh, we assume that we already found out that that credentials uh, can be used on this target as well. So let's exploit our target. As you can see, we are getting access to our target machine. If everything goes well, it will start. In. Now the target, the payload was executed. Okay, so it binded the TCP. So it's meaning the target is listening on this port right now. And we now connected back to the target. We are sending now the the stage. Let's give a second and we got access to our machine. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. What happened now? So it means that now we got access. Second. Okay. Now we got access to this machine. From our Windows 10, we were able to access or to get a bind shell on this machine. As I said, the bind shell here is the most easy way to get a connection to our target. But now what you're gonna see is the most, and I, I can't say difficult, but it is complicated when you are trying to understand how to get a reverse shell through our attacker machine. So what's, what's going on now is we'll try to, to exploit this machine, this our target right now, to get back to our attacker machine. So because what, what, we, what we did now is size the only way uh, the attackers know to reach this machine was to this machine open a port and was listened there and we sent a connection and we, we, we were able to connect. But now our goal is to get back to our attacker machine. Bind, finish, agora, now we have to reverse. Reverse way is very complicated because now we are introducing uh, a, a module on meta exploit or a technique that is called port forwarding. Okay, let's do that uh, first. 
check to our target. Let's confirm what we got access to. So as you can see, we are here, 129. That is the, the port, the IP address we use it to attack. And we discover that the same host is connected to another network. So let's list it here. And we'll use the same technique to find out, discover our next target. Let's just use R and see if you can discover anything. As you can see, we have here 128 and R reveals to us that there is a machine with 129. So let's grab this IP address and list it here as our next target. Yes, the idea here is okay. Uh, we'll use bind, we'll use uh, a reverse connection. Let's see what exactly our uh, client can listen, what the ports that open on our target. But before we do that, we need to enable or to create a router to that target or to that network. So I will show another way to do the same, to achieve the same thing that we did earlier. If you can recall, let me just list here. We have here a routing to uh, network uh, to 17. Now we have to create another route to this network. So how can we do that? It's a simple one. Let's go back to our section. It's section six. Okay. Let's run here out. Auto route as and I'm specifying the subnet. Let me specify the subnet. Okay. As you can see, I'm using the uh, different approach to add a route to Meta on Meta on Meta Exploit. So let's go back. As you can see here, we have two routes routes to our target network. We have the first one that is going through the section four, and we have another one that is going through section six. It means that if you have multiple network, multiple network, you will be listing here all the routes and in which section those routes they are going through. If one session goes down, it's meaning if they have the, like they have um, a dependent section, it means that we lose access to other section as well. So. Let's do the same here. What's our target IP address? This is our uh, target IP address. Let's just see if you can scan it. Okay, let's find out what ports are open here. Let me just push a little bit here. Okay, hmm. as we can see, we don't have a port 445 open, but only we have port 3389. So what can be our goal? We can test if the same credential as used to access the RDP connection on that target. Uh, I did this on purpose to block all the ports and only left uh, uh, RDP port open for one reason. What I want to, to show you guys is uh, 
what I want to, to show you guys is how we can use Frogchain to access uh, uh, RDP uh, on our target machine. Okay, let's do that quickly. Since we have credentials here, we can launch RDP connection. Okay, let's do that. Let's be using our desktop. So by using our desktop, we can specify our target IP address. We can give the IP, IP, IP give the username and password, but we left that to do it on GUI. So we are, we'll specify here for exchange. What you, what you want to do is just only, since we have connection or the right connections through this section, we can easily use Procchain to initialize a remote desktop to our target machine. So as we can see here, let's log in. Very easy like that. Okay, we got access to our target machine. So it was very easy and simple to understand how can we pivot through multiple networks and get access to each of our target. But using RDP during the penetration testing is not is never the good approach. Why? Imagine if the client is working right now on this machine. If you connect, you will disconnect the target. If you connect, you will disconnect the target. So what you have to do is, for example, if the port, the RDP is the only port open to you to connect to your target, you can craft your payload and you get your metaperta section. So I will very quickly create our exploit that will be launched into our target machine. But before, before do that, now we have to understand our last approach. What we're gonna do now is, since we only have RDP connection here, okay? We have RDP here. So what you want to do is, I don't want to use a blind, okay? I want to use a meta a reverse TCP. I don't want to use bind TCP. I want to use a reverse TCP. For me to be able to use reverse TCP, I need to follow the exactly how the, net, the, the network traffic is going through. Let's understand first. The first thing, if the target of my attacker send a request, the request go first to Windows 10 machine. Okay, after that, this traffic is forwarded to the destination. For example, if I'm saying that I want to, to go through, or I want to connect to this machine. And if I want to reach this machine, I have to, this uh, machine, this machine that's only, is the only machine that knows how to reach this machine, it will be the machine that will send the traffic. In. So let me recall, I was saying the attacker want to reach this machine. The same thing we did with RDP, how that was possible because the attacker sent a request to this machine, okay? This machine uh, received the request, received the package and forwarded to this machine. Since this machine is the machine that's connected directly to this network, the machine forwarded the request to this machine and was able to communicate. The same thing we did here, we have to do on reverse way. You see, reverse way. So it means that I will show you how we can reverse the communication, the communication from our target machine so that can be able to reach our attacker machine. To do that, I will step-by-step step explain what's going on here. We will use a technique called port forwarding. So port forwarding is, uh, is implementation of uh, uh, NAT address. So it's meaning that we will have our IP address here and a specific port, for example. And if this machine receives any connection or a request to that specific IP address on that specific port, it will forward to a destination. 
The same thing will happen here. It will forward to the destination. So if my Windows 7 requires any, uh, any connection to this machine, if this machine is not able to handle and is configured to forward that request, it will forward to this machine. Since this machine also will be configured to forward the request, it will forward this request to the final destination. Okay, let me just do that on the notepad as well. Okay, we have here, um, let me go back here. So that I'm, I don't lose my section here. So we have here our attacker. Our attacker is running on, let me just grab here. Is running on this specific IP address. Okay. This is our attacker IP address. So our first target is running on this specific address. So first, what you have to guarantee is if any machine or any request coming from this network can reach our target, our, our attacker machine. This is the first thing we have to do. We have to guarantee that if this machine requires a communicate request uh, request access to any resources to our attacker machine is able to reach because we are configure a reverse connection. First, we'll divide the network, the, the, the our topology and do it step by step. So let's first understand. We are saying that to be able to any devices on this network to reach my target has to pass through this network. So it means if 128 want to access any host port or any host file on this machine has to go through this network, okay? Let's just use a module on, the, uh, on MetaExploit to, to automate this configuration. We'll use a module called port proxy. Okay. Port proxy is only work for Windows uh, target machine. That's why on our pool, I have asked which tool do you guys use for uh, Linux uh, port, uh, port forward? So what you're going to do is port proxy, port forwarding, we are dealing with uh, understanding the concept. So we are telling our client machine or our target if re receive any request to, to this specific IP address on this specific port, it will forward to uh, another IP address and specific port. Let's just check the options here. Port, port, port Port proxies is very easy to use and very easy to understand. First, we have to understand is what is, what is the connect uh, address and what is the local address. The local, the connect address for this situation is very easy, which means, let me do something very easy here. First, I will initialize, I will create a file here. Let me just create a simple file. I want to host this file. I will give a name. Um, I will give. A, I will create this content proxy um, live, and I will save on the file called Kali Target Kali Machine. Okay. So I created the file, and I will host this file using Python module. on port 8383. So what I want to achieve now is anyone on this network can be able to reach my Kali machine because now it's not possible. Why? Because we only have one way 
uh, connection. It means that the only the target can reach the only the attacker can reach the targets. The targets cannot reach back to the attack. So we'll open a port on our attacker machine and we'll be listening to receive the connection back. So what's that mean? It's meaning that I'm listening on the port 8383 and I'm hosting everything that's inside this directory. So let's now understand the concept. What I have to do now is to tell the method uh, to configure this module to uh, automatically configure my target, my first target. So my first target is running on section four, right? That means if anyone is able to reach this section, it's inside this network. Okay, let's, let's, let's clarify that. Let's go back. Here we can see that on our local address, it means that is the IP address that anyone on our desired network can reach to have. What does that mean? Here on the local, you have to refer the IP address that has been used to communicate with the other hosts inside that network. Not, let's assume, the, the, the IP address that our target, our attacker have the right access. Let's go back again. On the local address, we have to specify the local IP address that is listening, that we are using to communicate with other targets inside that network. Here, let's set local address. Local address here will be this one. This is the IP address that our uh, machine is using to listen for. Let's just confirm that. Okay, if config, oh, my session died. That's too bad. Okay. Let me just quickly go back to my section. Okay, there. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay, let me just go back to my, this one. My section are dying, okay, for reason, because they depend on each other. Run 28. Okay. I should create persistence, but I didn't imagine that my old session was gonna die in the same time. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wow. Most of you guys are using MetaXploit as your preferred C2. Wow, 
Mm, nice. <laughs> That's very nice. I hope this don't take time. Okay. Okay, let's go back to port prompt. As I was saying that now you have to specify the local IP address. The local IP address for our first target is first to configure a reverse uh, a port forwarding on this machine, meaning that this machine will be listing on port 83. Oh, second. On port 83, 83. If any request it comes to this specific uh, network, it will be forwarding to our attacker okay let's that let's do that so set local address the local address that we have to specify here has to be the this local address okay let's say let's set the local port the local port here I will use the same port for all the connections. So 8383 83 will be the same port here. So let me set the connect address. The address that I want to connect if this IP address receive any request to this port is my Kali machine. Let me just quickly check here my IP address. is 192, let me just note it here. Okay. Set, set connect address, set connect port. Okay, let's quickly check. The connect address is how Kali machine. The local address is one of the network cards IP address that is on our target. It means that any connection that will go to that specific IP address has to be forwarded to this uh, to this uh, IP. Let's just run this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot to specify the section. Let's see the section seven. That section seven. Now it's everything okay. The section that you, you want to target is section seven. Let's run this. Now, what exactly is going on here? This module is going to uh, create or configure a role on our target machine. That's first our Windows 30, Windows 7 machine. So even if you want, if any type of connection will come through that specific port, it will be forwarding to our target, okay? As you can see here, there's already uh, uh, two roles created. We have the third role created here. That is from this particular IP address will be forwarding to this remote address, okay? So do you guys understand what exactly is going on here? I will connect to my uh, Windows machine. Let's just quickly connect to my Windows machine. Which machine I'm, I'm connecting to? I'm connecting to this particular machine. So I want to test if this machine can reach the service, my web, my web service that is working on my target. If this communication is going uh, perfectly, we can move on. If it's not, there's something wrong, okay? I'm just doing this because you, have, you guys have to understand exactly what's going on here. 
On real hold, you have to make sure that everything is working perfectly. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, let's just test if this target machine can reach to our attacker machine. We are almost there. If you just make this work, the next step is very easy and we craft our payload and finish. Okay, let's stop. Ha. That's the question. Which IP address we have to send the request? If this machine want to access that uh, the port is running here, 83, 83 has to send the request to IP address that is assigned on this network because of the IP address that is configured in the room. So let's do that. Is 172.16. Uh, okay, I already have here. Let's on port 83, 83. Uh, oh, HTTP 172, okay, 83, 83. As you can see, we have here Kali machine prox line. I wanted to create a file. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I use a torch to create a file, but not what they wanted to do. <laughs> I think guys are saying, my wife, what this guy is doing right there? <laughs> I wanted to use echo. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just uh, do this like test.txt. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to echo this output on the file. What I did, I did on the wrong way, but never mind. Sometimes when you're doing something here and don't realize. Okay, I have created my file here, test, and I have here my content. What I did there is just created a file and I created an output to anywhere. <laughs> okay, they are here to file, okay? Anyway, so we can see that our target can reach our cost machine. But if you go back here, we can see the request was made by 128, which means that our port forwarding is working perfectly. So what you have to do now is to configure a port forwarding on this machine so that this Windows 7 can be able to send request here and Windows 10 forwards the question back here so that Windows, another Windows 10 machine can reach our server, okay? But there are people saying that, ah, Vanille, there is a simple way to do this, I know. Imagine if your client doesn't have access to internet. If your client had access to internet, you can just simple using a public IP address. You don't need to do all of these steps. But if you are attacking a machine that doesn't have access to internet, obviously you have to do that, okay? And for other many, many reasons, okay? So let's now configure our second port forwarding. So here we have to change our connection address and we have to change our local address. We only just change it here. You see that we have 172.16.17.18, which the IP address this machine has the right access to. It. So we have here our target machine. I just set connection address. The connection address will be the same to our local. Why? If you go back, this machine, they can communicate using, let's just clean this. This machine, this machine can only communicate with this one using this port. But 
this machine to be able to communicate to this one, it used this port. So that's why we are specifying the network that this machine is able to communicate, okay? Let's, let's go back there. This is our connect address. And now we have to specify here our local address. So the local address for our target is one, uh, 128. Let's just confirm that on our section so that we don't lose time. Okay, you see, is the same network that our target machine can connect back to it. Okay, set the local address. Um, yes, local address, this one. Section to confirm is section eight. Okay, then we are ready to go, let's just run. Okay, so if everything is okay, now uh, this is not gonna work. We lost our section. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying here because it will be total disaster to speak for more than around one hour. <laughs> Okay, let's just connect back to our target. Okay, now let's test. As you can see here, we have already created a communication back. It's meaning that any request that will come to this specific IP address on this specific port will be forwarded to this particular IP address on this specific port. Okay, let's uh, do this test. Oh, sorry. HTTP 192.168. Oh, it's already there. 8383. 83. Oh, perfect. We are able now to send connection and receive connection. If you can open here, we have here our web file. If you analyze here, all the requests are coming on the same pause, on the same IP address because we are forwarding the traffic. So it means that any request that's made from our attacker machine, when it's go through the network, it looks like this IP address is requesting access. If you receive all the requests will come through this uh, IP address. Now is the final part of this presentation. Let's craft our payload and get a reverse TCP connection. So I uh, will cancel this for now, okay? So I will be using MS Venom. So MS Venom is the, is the tool part of MetaExploit that uh, we use to create payloads, okay? Let me just craft uh, a simple Windows payload. Meter, meter, reverse, TCP. Okay, so uh, here is the secret, local host. The local host, guys, it must be this IP address that the target can reach, you understand? Because once the communication is initialized or sent to this target to this IP address, the IP address will follow the network traffic or the network uh, flow. It will send to the Windows for the first Windows 10 and the second Windows 10. Also, the Windows 10 will forward to back to us. Okay, let's just copy this IP address. Uh, 192. Okay. 
Okay. Let's just do it again. MSF Venom. Windows. Reverse. TCP. Okay. Let me specify the local host. I uh, will be 192.168.1.128 on local port 8383. So, um, okay, format exec and output last target dot exec. So I created a simple payload, okay? I want to use this payload to get back to us. If you configure a, a, a reverse TCP through a forward port, you have to specify the port, the IP address and the port that your target machine has access to it, okay? Let's just save this. If I didn't misspelling anything, it should create the file. Okay. It's taking a while. Okay, it's there. So I have created here my target, my payload. Let me host it on our mach uh, target machine. Okay, I will just refresh here and download. Okay, you already have it here. And I will cancel this because I want I need to use the same port. Now I will start exploit a, a, a handler so that you can be able to handle this uh, request. Let me just clear here. So I had to change here, I have to change here to specify the payload I use it there. Payload Windows interpreter. Reverse TCP. Okay, let me send a uh, configured L host. It will be our one twenty eight. That's it. Our local. The port is very important. 8383. Let's just see if everything is okay. This is what we need for now. Let me run this job on background. Now that I have started my handler, let's just go and execute. If everything is okay, we should get a reverse metaprater connection. And it's there. Mm. Very easily and wonderful. <laughs> a very hard process. Let's see, it's still setting the stage and it boom. We just got a meta better section on our final target machine. So that is still sending all the stage. We should be able here to have a full function meta better reversed. Okay, let's get here. Okay, let's just see if everything is standing up. Okay, it's there. As you can see, we got a full function reverse uh, metaperter section. So guys, so it's mean that uh, 
No, I have done. This is all I, I have guys to show to you. So it's very easy and simple. So guys, you can understand that uh, all the process we have to go. This is why I uh, I said it's very deep because we have a lot of process that we can set up and then get our matter pattern section on our last. So from here, you guys can easily go and start enumerating our final target and see if you can get access to our domain controller. So guys, uh, this was all I have prepared for this uh, specific section. I hope you guys have understanding. If you guys have any question, I will be uh, here to help. Oh, uh, there is a short section that has been created so that I can answer many of your questions. Okay, so don't, uh, uh, if you guys haven't uh, have any kind of uh, doubts, uh, the video will be posted on social media so guys you can review it. And uh, if you want also any help on set up this lab, it's very easy. As you guys understand, there's a multiple network that have been configured. So guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I'm done for today. Thank you so much, Vanildo. It was such an interesting presentation. The time just flew by today. <laughs> so we have already crossed our uh, our 90 minutes uh, limit time that we had, actually. <laughs> but we had I didn't fun. notice uh, that, but I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, because we had fun here, and I'm sure our participants also did. Um, we can go ahead and take one question, if anyone has a question. Uh, you can leave your question on the chat box or you can uh, raise your hands on the reaction button and we'll unmute you to, to let you ask your questions directly to our speaker here. Also, if uh, you do not have any questions you'd like to connect with him later on, you can always uh, connect with us on LinkedIn and you can join our group as well. I'll just share the link here. So yeah, you can join the link uh, group and connect with our speakers as well. Um, Amaro on chat has said great, present, great presentation, Vanildo, well presented. Yes, oh, thank it you, works. thank you. <laughs>